Hello and welcome to today's training. My name is Dr. Kasia Kainz. I am CEO and founder of EBV Global Institute. And today we're going to talk about lysine supplementation and EBV and why it's so important. It actually made to my top eight supplements and it's part of the core protocol that we use in our EBV recovery program. Lysine, similarly to NAC, is an amino acid. There are some similarities between them. So certain things that I'll talk about today, I'll indicate you may want to go to the NAC training to review some details I'll skip today because they are similar. Amino acid is a building block of protein. It's an essential amino acid, which means the body requires it from food. It doesn't produce it by itself, but it's abundant in food. So if you eat food, you're going to get it in your diet. However, by the time you have chronic EPV, diet is actually not going to move the needle and will not turn off the virus with as much as the diet can provide of lysine. Depending on the weight, a healthy person needs about 800 to 3000 milligram lysine from food every day. Now, lysine has a direct effect on EBV, it's directly antiviral, which is very important. However, it's very interesting. We don't have enough studies actually to show how amazing it is for this particular virus. We have plenty of studies for herpes viruses, including cold sores, canker sores, genital herpes, no problem. And I have seen resolve these issues. I have seen these issues resolved with even 500 or 1000 milligrams of lysine and sometimes within 20 minutes. That's remarkable. And we do have studies. And when you look at studies for lysine, there's very few. However, it is an amazing anti-EBV supplement. It has great reputation. I can confirm it from my clinical practice. <laughs> So there's one study in particular that I want to quote. So there is a component in lysine. I'm going to read it for you. Histone, H3, lysine, methyl transferase, SUV, 39H1. And that particular complex helps maintain EBV latency, meaning being dormant between reactivations. And again, go back to NAC training because I talk about latency, why it's important. NAC has a similar study. <laughs> so I explain this concept in more depth. There's also the concept of arginine versus lysine. And some people restrict arginine rich foods just because we learned that lysine and arginine compete with each other. And so I would caution you against restricting a complete food group because it may backfire. What we know about arginine is that it's required for many viruses to replicate, and that includes EBV. Uh, what is a little confusing is sometimes high arginine food sources are also high lysine sources. So the solution is not restriction. Solution is more lysine because they compete. So I would say you want to have a therapeutic amount of lysine in supplements on top of the diet rather than reducing all the foods with arginine. With that, some of the highest arginine foods would be turkey, pork, seafood. So you probably don't want to eat these every day. Some of the plant sources of arginine would be nut butters, nuts, peanuts. And so these are snacks more than meals. So you don't want to <laughs> eat half of a jar of a nut butter. <laughs> That's not sustainable or healthy in any way. Arginine can be manipulated by the virus. And according to my interview with Dr. Vojdani, EBD is the only virus that can citrullinate arginine. Citrullination means that arginine has, has altered its amino acid sequence. And this is linked to autoimmune disorders. For example, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, psoriasis, Alzheimer's, even cancer. And currently in medical practice, doctors already use 
the test for citrullinated antibodies when looking for early stages of rheumatoid arthritis. That's established already. And so you can ask your doctor for citrullinated antibodies. It's rare that it comes up. It might. And so again, the solution is make sure that you have therapeutic level of lysine on top of the diet. So let's talk about many other benefits of lysine, why it's such an unsung hero <laughs> on so many levels. I have a list here that I'm just going to read because there's so many things that lysine actually does. Remember, it's a building block of protein. It's an amino acid. We need that for a lot of functions. It increases cal calcium absorption and therefore can help prevent osteoporosis. <clears throat> it's not about having enough calcium, it's about the absorption of calcium. And therefore, it promotes better bone strength. It increases absorption of iron, zinc, and vitamin C. It increases collagen production, especially on the skin. And actually, vitamin C and lysine together build that collagen. For those of you that are trying collagen supplements, here's the building blocks of collagen for you. It increases growth hormone for muscle support and for longevity and youth in your cells, actually. It helps produce enzymes, antibodies, and hormones. Remember that all our cells are built out of building blocks, out of amino acids, out of protein. And lysine is one of those amino acids that is needed for enzymes, antibodies, hormones, your cells. It supports the immune system. It reduces stress-induced anxiety. It's interesting because EBV causes anxiety in different ways for different reasons. And just having the condition creates anxiety. But it's interesting that lysine decreases the brain-gut response to stress as well as decreasing cortisol levels in the blood. And blood elevation of cortisol directly feeds EBV and can reactivate your virus. So this is crucial. Who knew that lysine helps with your stress, right? It can be even helpful in schizophrenia. It can improve symptoms of depression by increasing serotonin levels in the brain. Depression is often a side effect of long-term EBV. Not that people with EBV are depressive or depressed, but they become depressed because of that condition. And so when you are chronically ill and chronically stressed, you will not probably make enough serotonin. And actually that can be improved in the brain. The brain levels of serotonin can be improved by lysine. It also can increase GABA. So GABA is a neurotransmitter that is made in the brain and makes you feel really relaxed and calm. GABA requires B6, it requires magnesium. These are often depleted in chronic stress. Women are notoriously low in magnesium, <laughs> so you can't produce enough GABA. But lysine as well goes in and increases it. It's, the GABA is the opposite of depression, anxiety. Lysine can also reduce hair loss and promote hair growth. Imagine that a lot of women in our community complained about hair loss, and there are pathways in which viruses like EBV actually cause hair loss. But here is lysine. It improves absorption of iron, right? I mentioned that already. Iron is needed for your hemoglobin. Hemoglobin carries oxygen, and hemoglobin will then carry oxygen better to your hair molecule. Voila. There's lysine for you. A couple of pointers on the dosages. For acute situations when you're just starting, you can do 1,000 milligrams two or three times a day. Away from food together with an AC, that's the best combo. Like an AC, a reminder that lysine is an amino acid, so it likes to be without food. You don't want to do a high dose for years on end. There are other components in a recovery protocol that you want to work with. Lysine is part of the synergy with other nutrients and multitaskers. And so after a couple of months, you can go to a lower dose that is safer. All right, let me see. There's a couple of warnings and side effects and when not to use lysine. So let's talk about that. 
If you overdo lysine, you can you can get diarrhea, nausea, abdominal pain, gallstones, or kidney dysfunction. Don't use it if you have hemochromatosis because lysine enhances iron and vitamin C absorption. Vitamin C absorption also enhances iron absorption. So that's not something that you would use. But for the same reason, it's beneficial if you have iron deficiency. <laughs> <clears throat> High doses of lysine long-term can increase cholesterol and increase risk of gallstones, at least according to animal studies. So if you have either of these conditions, you may want to be very conservative, maybe one capsule a day. Now of note is the fact that we have studies showing that high cholesterol can be caused by EBV itself. It can be caused by hypothyroidism or also Hashimoto's. <clears throat> <clears throat> and one of the causes of Hashimoto's is EBV. And high cholesterol can be induced by diet. And it's often easy to bring it down and regulate it to normal. So first I would say work with a clinical nutritionist, work on your lifestyle, <clears throat> on your diet, bring that cholesterol down, and then you can enjoy the benefits of lysine, no problem. Also, if EBV is causing high cholesterol, as you incorporate other supplements and a full EBV protocol, the cholesterol will self-regulate and then you can add a therapeutic dose of lysine at that point. So you want to work with a clinician. So again, high doses shouldn't be taken with compromised kidneys. Also, don't take high lysine if you have aminoglycoside antibiotics. I'm going to read some of the examples. Gentamicin, neomycin, streptomycin, etc. Because there is a risk of nephrotoxicity, which is toxic kidneys. Long term excessive consumption of lysine may increase risk of Fan Coni syndrome, a condition where nutrients normally absorbed into the bloodstream are excreted as urine instead. There is a case report of a 44 year old woman who was taking. 3,000 milligram lysine for five years, develop this condition, and also chronic renal failure. So you don't want to be on a high dose of lysine for this long. You should not need it for EBV for this long. Recovery should not take that long. If I have anything to do with it, we're talking about months of therapeutic lysine. So when you get over EBV, when you are already functional, you may just stay with one capsule 500 and that's that. Other things to mention, remember it's best between meals. And like I said, a couple of months should be what you need. It's an unsung hero. And just like an AC, I'm really surprised that we don't have enough studies on EBV in particular. So enjoy them. They can be taken together because they're both amino acids away from foods again. And hopefully this will help you feel better. I hope this training was helpful and I'll see you next time.